Hi there, this is Kinetic Energy Equation Practice. So the equation's at the top. Kinetic energy equals a half times mass times speed squared. And it is speed, it's not velocity. Um, basically, kinetic energy is, or energy in general, is a scalar quantity. So we can't have velocity on the other side of the equation because velocity is a vector. So it's actually speed. So if you ask that in your exam, you know, V is speed. Anyway, so shorthand version, Ke, kinetic energy, equals a half mv squared. I'm sure that you've used that before. Kinetic energy is measured in joules. Um, mass is measured in kilograms. And speed is measured in meters per second. If you need an in-depth video on kinetic energy, there is one in my GCC uh, energy playlist. Anyway, let's do some practice. And remember to pause at any time if you need to make any notes. So if you have to pause and have a go at these three questions, and then in a moment, I'll take you through the answers. Okay, let's look at question one. A man is cycling at a velocity, and I've written velocity, but technically it should be speed, but velocity is okay, as long as it's in the same direction. But a man is cycling at a velocity of 9.51 meters per second. The mass of the man is 61 kilograms. 61 kilograms. Calculate the kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy is half mv squared. And then it's just a simple case, put the numbers in. So 0 0.5 times the mass of 61 times, and the only bit that we square is the speed, so 9.51 uh, squared. Could even do that if you wish. Pop that into your calculator. And that's 2,758 joules of kinetic energy. Number two, so a woman is cycling and has a kinetic energy of 6,330 joules. Her mass is 71.6 kilograms and we're going to calculate the velocity. So let's see how we do this one. So kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And then what we need to do this time is make the speed the subject. So we need to rearrange to get v. So to do that, we need to first of all get rid of a half. So to get rid of a half onto the other side, do the opposite of halving, which is doubling or times it by two. So we get two times the kinetic energy equals mv squared. Then we need to get rid of a times mass. So the opposite of times it by mass is dividing by mass. So we end up with two times the kinetic energy divided by mass is equal to speed squared. Then you can put that in your calculator, you know, two times the energy divided by mass and then square root it to give you the speed. So two times the kinetic energy, so we've got two times 6,330 divided by the mass of 71.6. And then we need to square root the answer to give us the speed. And if you calculate that, you should get 13.3 meters per second. Off that one, okay. Right, let's do another one, but this time we're going to find the mass. So a child is cycling at a velocity, should be speed of 16.9 meters per second and has a kinetic energy of 13,700 and this time we're going to calculate the mass. So kinetic energy equals half mv squared. Remember we need to get make m the subject so we need to get rid of a half so the opposite of halving times it by two so two times the kinetic energy equals mv squared. And then we simply need to get rid of a times v squared. So the opposite of timesing by v squared is dividing by v squared. And that will give us the mass. So then we just need to put our numbers in. So 2 times the energy, so 2 times 13,700 divided by the speed squared, 16.9 squared. And if you calculate that, you'll get 96 kilograms. Okay, let's do two more questions, slightly trickier. So if you want to pause and have a go at these two, and then I'll take you through the answers. So question four, a car doubles its kinetic energy. What happens to the speed? So that's a bit of a strange question. It might seem strange, but it, you know, it can come on the, the higher tier stuff. So kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So if we doubled the kinetic energy, I'm going to use a different color. Let's do this in red. We doubled the kinetic energy. The left hand side of this equation has doubled, so we need to double the right hand side. 
Now, the mass is constant, so we assume it's constant unless things have fallen off the car, which we'll assume not. So the only thing that's happening is, is the speed's changing. Now, you might think, all right, so if we double the left-hand side, we can double the right-hand side, which, which looks like it makes sense. But the speed's squared, so two times speed squared would you know we have to time we have to square the two so that would actually be four so we can't do that because now we've got times two on the left hand side and times four on the right hand side so we need to think of a number that we can square that gives us two so the only number that does that is the square root of two because the square root of two squared is two so if we double the kinetic energy the speed would increase by a factor of root two the speed would increase by a factor of root 2. And if you put that in your calculator, the speed would be 1.41 times faster than it was before. If you got that really well done. All right, let's look at the last one. So a car um, converts kinetic energy into thermal energy in its brakes. And that's, that's how they work. But if a car doubles its speed what happens to the distance taken to stop? And we're going to assume that the braking force is constant. So this is a typical high-level examination question. And for something like this, we've got the equation for kinetic energy. So that will be kinetic energy equals a half mv squared. And what happened is the car has doubled its speed. So we've got 2v squared. So obviously... If we do 2v squared, that's the, the right-hand side has gone up by a factor of 4 because it's 2 squared. So the left-hand side would have to go up by a factor of 4 as well. So if we double the speed, I'll write this down. So if you double speed, you get 4 times the kinetic energy. So if you got that well done. But now we need to know what happens to the distance taken to stop. You're going to need another equation. The equation is work done is force times distance. So if we've got four times the kinetic energy, that means the brakes will have to do four times the work when they convert the thermal energy. Sorry, when they convert the kinetic energy into thermal energy. So four times the kinetic energy is four times the work done. Now it says that the braking force is constant, so the force will be the same. So the only thing that can happen if you know if the left hand side increases by a factor of four, the right hand side needs to do the same. But if the force is the same, then the distance must also increase by a factor of four. So if you double the speed, you get four times the kinetic energy for the same braking force. I'll just write the same force. It's four times the distance to stop. Okay, so that might have got a bit tough at end, but hopefully it went okay. And if you want to do it again, obviously, make your notes and then just rewind and, and try the two questions again. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll speak to you soon.